The 5.56 versus a 7.62 x 51. Which one will win on mild steel? Let's find out. We have a 5.56 55 grain M193 fired out of a 26 inch barrel. And we also have a 7.62 by 51 149 grain M80 fired out of a 24 inch barrel. Okay, before you ask, I will be using Winchester white box for both of these cartridges. So I don't want to hear any complaints about the ammo. Based on those numbers, they both gain velocity over what the boxes were claiming, so I think this should be a pretty fair test. The question is though, does a lot more velocity equate to more penetration on mild steel than about double the kinetic energy? We'll just have to go ahead and see, but not before we check out our new setup. Guys, I think you're gonna like this one. Say hello to Steel Sled 4.1. Basically, the only difference... Uh, I'll let you guys pick out the difference. Okay, good enough. The difference is the supports right here that I added on the top and bottom. Basically, they will uh, support the whole perimeter of the steel plate, so we should help to minimize the bending effect that there was before there were supports right there. Not 100% sure that this is going to work, but I think it should help a pretty decent amount. As always, we are starting off with a quarter inch of mild steel. Now let's get to it. Oh, it's looking good. It's fully supported. There we go. I am really interested to see if the much higher velocity of the 5.56 can make a cleaner hole in the quarter inch mild steel plate. Only one way to find out though. About as clean of a hole as I've ever seen and it looks like it went straight through. Let's see if it uh, did any damage to steel sled 4.1. All that extra velocity could, you know, definitely do something. Oh, I think I see the wad in there. No, it really doesn't look like anything from what I can tell. I mean, that was about what we were expecting. Not quite as clean of a hole as I was thinking. It's about as clean as I've ever seen, but not anything too crazy. I don't think the 762 by 51 is going to do anything spectacular, but you know, let's go see. Believe it or not, I actually like the whole of that 762 by 51 better than the 556. It just looks cooler to me, but uh, let's see. I really don't think there'd be any damage, but uh, we'll still get this quarter inch garbage out of there and then I don't see anything new. We're moving on up in the world to three eighths of an inch of mild steel. This one is definitely a bit of a challenge. Oh, I think we're good to go. I am liking these supports better already. The problem with three eighths of an inch of mild steel, well, I really shouldn't say problem, but with the 5.56 out of a 16 inch barrel at least, it kind of sucks at going through three eighths of an inch of mild steel. With this 26 inch barrel though, 3,400 feet a second, you would think it would melt right through. I guess we just have to find out. Okay, I think think that is what I want to see right there. Can't tell for sure. It definitely looks like it went through. Yes, straight through three eighths of an inch of mild steel. That is pretty impressive performance. I guess that extra couple hundred feet a second definitely helps it out quite a bit. I really couldn't have asked for better results than that. Now back to the 7.62 by 51. Surprisingly, I think we are, yep, we are neck and neck. I cannot believe that these cartridges are this close. I mean, we'll see on the next one how close they actually are. Two pretty decently clean holes. No new damage either. All right, it's finally time for the plate that everybody came here for, the half inch mild steel plate. This one's a real challenge if I'm being honest. Yep, there we go, nice and tight. Although I really think that these supports are helping out quite a bit. I couldn't tell you what's gonna happen. I mean, the 7.62 by 51 is kind of a hit or miss if it actually goes through, depending on the load. And the 5.56, I was honestly surprised that it went through three eighths of an inch of mild steel, so we'll see what happens.
There ain't no way, there ain't no how. Yep, it did not go through that half inch mild steel plate. It uh, went quite a bit deeper than I thought it would though. I mean, obviously I can't tell with my eyes, so we'll have to go back to the bench and measure it. Back to the 7.62 by 51 though. I need to put a scope with an adjustable parallax on that rifle or something because there is no way that I hit down here. I was aiming right here and it hit all the way down here. That is crazy. I had to aim up in this corner to hit that spot. I mean, I sighted it in earlier and I, I don't know what the issue is, but uh, anyway, let's see. Guys, I, I don't know if it went through. Oh, ho, ho, that is a big bulge, but it definitely did not go through. That is crazy. I thought for sure it was going to go, well, I guess I said it was a hit or miss, but I thought that that one for sure was going to go through. Well, I mean, I guess the only thing left to do is go back to the bench and figure out just how deep each one of them went. Wait a second. Huh. What? Stop it, you're scared. This is an M855A1, the real deal. All the pressure, not that loaded down garbage. But uh, this is just about the most extreme 5.56 load out there, at least in terms of uh, non-armor piercing. So let's see what this one does to the half-inch mild steel plate. I don't know, I can't really tell from the outside. There's kind of the uh, copper jacket in there. It's kind of blocking the hole. Let's see though. That's what I'm talking about. Straight through a half inch of mild steel, and that is a clean hole. But uh, let's see if it did any damage to steel sled 4.1. I really don't see anything, so I think we're good to go. Freaking impressive for a 5.56 to say the least, but uh, that was actually the last one that I have. So I uh, guess now the only thing really left to do is to go back to the bench fucking flies is go back to the bench and figure out just how deep those other rounds went because it's time to grind The absolute deepest point that I was able to find with the 762 by 51 was 524 thousandths. The absolute deepest point with the 556 on the other hand was 440 thousandths. Guys, that's about 84% of the depth of what the 762 by 51 did with a much lower sectional density and about half the kinetic energy of what the 762 by 51 was producing at the muzzle. I guess the extra 500 feet per second that the 556 was producing definitely helped it out in this case. Well, I mean, obviously an extra 500 feet per second definitely couldn't hurt, but it was way closer closer than I thought it would be between these two cartridges. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas. Mm -hmm.